Good afternoon. My name is Deputy Superintendent Adam Rice, Officer in Charge, Financial and Cyber Crime Investigation Branch for South Australia Police. In early 2023, Financial and Cyber Crime Investigation Branch, the Cyber Crime Investigation Section, commenced Operation Review, targeting the activity of an online dark web vendor trafficking in illicit drugs. An Adelaide Hills man has been arrested for dark web trafficking and money laundering involving cryptocurrency. The investigation identified illicit activity on a dark web marketplace, attributed that activity to a real life person in South Australia, identified and traced cryptocurrency used in the offending, and then ultimately led to a successful search and seizure operation. Using the dark web environment for illicit activity is not beyond the reach of law enforcement. You are not anonymous on the dark web, and police will continue to investigate online drug trafficking and illicit activity and bring people before the courts. Adelaide Hills man was alleged to have been operating several different vendor profiles on the dark web. Each profile was selling a variety of illicit drugs, including nidazines. The vendor allegedly sourced packaging and equipment before packaging those drugs and sending them through a number of mail systems. The vendor amassed significant wealth during the period of time, allegedly through the illicit activity and the laundering of some of that money. Between 20 to 22 September 23, police searched two residential, um, one residential property and two storage facilities. Police seized a number of illicit drugs, including, as I said, nidazines, cash, cryptocurrency, electronic devices, and other evidence in conjunction with the offending, and a quantity of property believed to be the proceeds of crime. A 25-year-old man remains in custody at this time. I'd like to go through some more detail, if I can, um, in relation to the offending um, and just highlight some of the safety considerations and concerns around his behaviour to the South Australian community. I've got a number of items uh, here on the table um, that I'd like to run through quickly. First item being what looks to be an innocuous laptop down the end. Um, it is anything uh, but. It is specifically imported, has the highest levels of encryption and is the item of choice for this type of um, activity on the dark web. You'll notice also there a number of mobile phones um, which are also highly encrypted and used in this activity as well. Both, all three of those items are now the subject of digital forensics analysis and we have full access to those items. You'll notice here also a number of gel caps, a number of the illicit drugs that I'll take you through in a moment are in both uh, powder and in liquid form. And these items here are obviously used to then package those illicit powders up before being distributed to purchasers. I'm just going to take you through to the screen here if I can. A number of these drugs are too dangerous to bring in here, so at this stage we've just taken some photographs for you. You have some of those packages um, in your um, possession, I understand, as well. So this is how some of the packaging and some of the drugs were located in one of the storage units. I'll get you just to move through some of these um, photos for me now. As you can see, another um, package of, uh, of powder. This particular one here contains what is, if again, is true to label, and these are all undergoing forensic testing at the moment, but if it's true to label, is one of the nidazines that I referred to. And the other two items either side are also undergoing testing at the moment as well. And again, all of this activity is for production of cash. These are a number of inhalers I've used to um, transpose some of the uh, liquids into an ingestible format. Um, this is subject to testing, but we would have suggested uh, LSD tabs. And again, just an array of illicit drugs um, available. And more there again. These here are likely, um, sorry, sorry back one. These here are likely to be um, steroids that we've just passed through there. 
Just get hold here for a moment. This is the vendor profile. The little edge of the, uh, the, uh, the rest of the mail is operating a number of these vendor profiles. We won't be disclosing the, the site that the vendor was using. We're not here to advertise the site, but what we're here to do is just explain a little bit about what we're seeing. This is the profile. This is his name across the top. You'll see on the left-hand side, the number 45. And on this side here, the number 483. These are what we would suggest to be successful transactions. So these are completed sales. And this just gives a little bit about the professionalism of some of these sites and how they look. And you'll see here that there's 93 on one side and 95. These are ratings, if you like, about how um, the vendor is um, perceived amongst his client base. So a bit like you would expect on a normal marketplace that perhaps you've shopped on yourself. Okay. This here is an example of what um, a customer would see when they're looking to purchase. There's the physical packaging, the price, all the things you'd expect to see in an open marketplace for normal lucid activity. And here is again an array of things that you can buy. All different types of drugs, all different types of sizes. These are finalised sales. You can see the, the price here and the fact that it's finalised and done. So again, a lot of information provided to us. Here is some commentary from the purchasers to the person selling, asking questions as you might do on a, a standard marketplace. And obviously, the proceeds of crime use of purchase by individuals. As I said, one of the items um, seized, um, illicit drugs were seized in various quantities. A group of synthetic um, drugs, known as synthetic opioids or nitazines, were seized. These drugs are particularly of concern to us. They're highly toxic drugs, similar to fentanyl, but which have never been approved for human consumption, and they have huge risk of um, overdose. Nitazines are quite new. Um, to this a drug scene. Um, concerningly, they're now being found more and more across the world and here in Australia. They've most recently been found here in Australia with a whole raft of illicit drugs and powders also in tablet form. In July 2023, SA Health provided an alert to the public about a death in South Australia and a number of several non-fatal overdoses in South Australia which resulted from the use of nitazines. And although these drugs are to be tested and weighed still, um, the quantities of which we believe we found are the largest seized in Australia today. As I said, I'll run you through a few of those um, points and a few of the um, illicit material and some of the um, items seized. I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have at this time. Do you, are you struck by, I mean, you say that you're not anonymous on the dark web. Does it strike you as particularly brazen, this sort of operation? Just simply getting online and flogging off illegal drugs? Uh, Brazen, no, I think it's um, it's a pretty well known platform now, the dark web, for this type of activity. There's there's really no other reason to go on the dark web than to do this. It's not illegal itself to go on the dark web, um, but there's really no other purpose than um, the purchase of illicit material. It's not just drugs, it's it's all of this material there, child pornography or guns, weapons, and anything you can buy on the dark web. So uh, unfortunately not new to us, but something we are now heavily involved in obviously investigating and processing. You said this is one. This is the largest seizure of nitazines in Australia to date. Given that this is just one person that you've arrested, are you concerned that there are more people that may have been helping this individual, given the size of, of what has been accrued? Certainly, um, that's the belief at this stage. As I said, subject to the weights and, and the testing, if it's the largest. Um, it's of continu continuing concern, this particular drug, because it is so so toxic, absolutely. Um, and we are still obviously ongoing investigations as to how the person came into the possession of those, but we believe them to be imports. Can we, we speak to the death of that man at SA Health? We have no information to suggest there's a drug weight at this time. Okay. How many kilos were seized? Uh, still subject to weight, but around five kilos. Do you know how far this person's reach was in terms of where the people were that he was selling to? Were they all in SA or interstate or that's still unclear? Uh, it's, it's still under investigation, but we believe it's nationally distributed. When you say they accrued significant wealth, 
how much are we talking approximately? So currently we've seized about 1.5 million in crypto currency um, and small amounts of cash, tens of thousands in cash. So the majority of it is in cryptocurrency, um, which we now have possession of and we've seized. Can you give us any more information about where in the Adelaide Hills this person is based? Uh, not at this time, no. Are there any, um, is there any potential uh, uh, regulatory um, regulations you can sort of seek in terms of people using the dark web? Is, or is it just something you just have to grapple with as a, as a law enforcement agency? I think more law enforcement are grappling with it. It's not something you can regulate out. The internet is the internet. Um, so it's not something that um, any one jurisdiction can just regulate and enforce, unfortunately. Um, so it's something we grapple with. Um, and we're very connected amongst our law enforcement partners in that endeavour. Are you pursuing the people that were purchasing these drugs online to show us the profile? And the... Absolutely ongoing, absolutely. Um, with these with these knives that being marketed as fentanyl or fentanyl like? Uh, um, not to my knowledge, no. To my knowledge. So what were they being marketed? Being marketed as, as um, true, to, true to labels. So what we saw written on those labels was um, what they were marketed as. So there's a variety of different drugs um, and, um, and names um, around synthetic drug dealers. So your your I think financial crime and cyber crime, but you know from your understanding, not as easy. I mean, we saw two successful deaths in Sydney from people taking capture just, just on the weekend. How potentially deadly is the not as easy to an unwitting customer? You only need the smallest amount of like I'm talking granular small amount. So yeah, and that's why the the health warning is you simply don't know what you're taking and you don't know what quantity it's been provided to you. So that's the that's the health message. One is don't take it at all. But second is you don't know exactly what you're taking and the quantity and the purity of what you're taking, if it is in fact what you think you're taking. So there's a whole raft of unknowns in there, um, which is why we you know, try and get the message out there. It's just too dangerous to take. Sorry if this has already been asked, but do you anticipate more arrests? Uh, it's early days at the moment, um, so I, I wouldn't say no, but we believe we've um, taken out another person. The watches and jewellery, are they part of the laundering element of the operation? Yeah, obviously they need to um, purchase items and they want to um, live a lifestyle, so absolutely. So you see some of those items there are um, very expensive. Um, the ring itself, I believe, receipt is about $40,000 for the ring. So um, often you see the trappings of drug sale um, and jewellery and other high-end items and you just see some of those things there. What, what will you do now with the proceeds of crime like this in the car that you showed? So those are subject to uh, confiscation of assets proceedings at the moment. So they'll be they'll follow along through parts of the criminal process, and once the criminal process has um, been conducted, we'll finalise the assets and resolve it as well. With the cryptocurrency, I know sometimes there's like a bit of a, a lock on the cryptocurrency, but you you have full access to that cryptocurrency. Yeah, some of the items you see down the front here, some of those silver uh, business card type size items, um, they're they're clean, they don't contain um, seeds, but often you'll see seeds stamped on those, which is a bit like your passcode to get into those wallets and to reconstitute the wallets. Um, we've been successful in doing that, so that uh, cryptocurrency is now in a satisfied police's possession. And what